We actually have our first phone caller on the line tonight, Paul from Panama City Beach. He has a question about an old ticket. Paul, you can go ahead with your question now. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Am I live? Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I moved here from uh, South Texas in 2007, and I recently received a, a, a demand letter from a law firm in San Antonio that I had a ticket that wasn't paid from 2004, 17 years ago. And this is I've gotten three letters in the last month uh, demanding payment, telling me that there's a warrant for my arrest and uh, I, I, my uh, initial reaction was I, I, I contacted the uh, Texas State Attorney and filed a complaint. The second one, I filed a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission for fraud, and I still keep getting these letters, and uh, I, I don't have any recollection. I was in South Texas in 2004 when this occurred, but... Uh, I know me, and if there had been some kind of a warrant for my arrest or a failure to appear, I would have paid it. Now, I'm just wondering what to do about this. Well, first thing I think you need to do is get us a copy of that uh, correspondence. And you've contacted the right people. Uh, for folks that uh, may not understand this, when somebody is trying to collect a debt, there's a couple different ways you can go. Uh, number one is the Federal Trade Commission. Number two, uh, there is actually a private cause of action against somebody who's trying to collect a debt um, that, that's not owed. And so that's a, what's called Fair Debt Collection Practices Act case. And uh, even though it, it, it ties into our automobile, it's a little bit different of something that we do uh, within our practice. But if a, somebody is trying to collect a debt and it is not a good debt, and here, my goodness, it's 2004, I even think that uh, there's a statute of limitations on uh, traffic tickets and collection uh, even for the state of Texas. Now, I'm not licensed in the state of Texas, but certainly we can check into it. First of all, the very first thing we can do is find out whether or not it's a valid ticket. Uh, and number two, find out if there is a warrant for your arrest. And number three, if it's not, and this is some type of a scam, then we can put you in touch with the proper authorities. Since it's crossing state lines, we would, uh, and, it, and they're utilizing the mail services. There's uh, the U.S. Postal Inspector that we can contact for you, and also the FBI. Uh, the FBI is interested in cases involving consumer fraud if it is of a large nature. And uh, they may have a book on this person or a book on this particular scam, and they can alert authorities and alert others uh, to put the word out that, uh, look, something pending from 17 years ago is not a valid debt. And typically, any other valid debt, it would be wiped off. It would be well beyond the statute of limitations. So that's what we'll, we'll look into for you, Paul. So we've got your number. We'll give you a ring tomorrow. Uh, and trying to get that information and, and try to help you out and put a very uh, tight end uh, on this particular situation for you. Larry, just a quick follow-up to that. For Paul or anyone else out there who might be wondering, wait, do I have an old traffic ticket? Or how do, how do you find out if you get one of those? I, I got one in Gainesville maybe three or four years ago, and it was just an illegal like parking ticket. And I didn't even see it on my car. You had to go to this website and pay it off on this website. And it, they can kind of like, you know, get you to pay it extra by you know not making it aware that you have an outstanding ticket and many people like me would say well i would have just paid it if you had told me how can you check that what's the best way to go about even in the state of florida yeah chris when you want to go ahead and take that uh well you know courtney you can check in the clerk's office our clerk's offices are uh, uh, accessible online 24 hours a day so you can actually run your own search of yourself to see if courtney mims has actually <laughs> had more than a uh, parking violation in gainesville uh, but similar to what Paul's issue was, there's a clerk of court and the clerk keeps all of these records and the jurisdiction in Texas, well, uh, contacting them would be my first, start, my first step in starting that to see if there's even a, a ticket that's uh, even valid or even out there. And it could be one of those phishing scams too, Courtney, that we see. I mean, how many times have any three of us received a phone call about an outstanding warrant for us that, that came from Oregon or Texas or California, places we may have never even been before. And people are fishing for your social security number, they're fishing for your date of birth and uh, valid addresses and identification. So you have to be extremely careful, but you know, if you're in the state of Florida, Florida has a great clerk of court system that you can access 24 hours uh, online, tw seven days a week. And uh, you can just run a search if you're that paranoid about it, not courting. So it may be the least of your worries. It may be the least of your worries. I mean, she is a, she is a gator. I mean, we got to worry about this oh, a little bit. Wow, I can't oh, put the shots fired right oh, there. Gotta, I'm still uh, a I'm staying out of this one. Saturday. I am staying out of this one tonight. <laughs> hey, I did pay it off, but man, it was, it was pretty hard to find it out. Yeah. You know, you had to go through a couple of search engines and you wonder, like you said, 
if you actually have one or you don't and it's fishing or things like that you just it, you have to be so careful these days if, if you do Courtney just you know contact the the uh, jurisdiction mm -hmm. where that ticket originated and verify it with the clerk's office and uh, they'll be able to tell you whether it's valid or not. I'll tell you another kind of scheme that's kind of shown up is uh, people have this kind of smeared looking thing of your license plate mm. and then they send it to you and say oh you, you missed a toll or you were in a toll booth and send us money yes, and, and things yeah. of that nature. I, I, we've actually gotten probably four or five calls in the last two years on that where somebody's like I wasn't in Orlando or I wasn't in Miami or I wasn't in South Carolina that have the you know the toll passes all together and so they try to put a warrant uh, a, or a lien on the license plate and say pay this, you know, you're, you could have paid it off for $23, but now it's 645 but call us up and we'll give, you know, we'll take care of it for you right away. And we have to quelch those kinds of things as well. It, it's rare that that happens, but you start to see it, like Chris was saying, it might be a phishing scam, it might be some type of scam where they're trying to get your information. What you don't want to do is call up, and, you know, call them up and say, hey, you got the wrong guy, and they say, oh, well, let me check your date of birth. Oh, and what's the last four of your social security number? Oh, you're right, Mr. Perry, that's not you. That's the information that they're looking for, and bam, they got you, and now they got your information, and you better lock down your credit. Watch out.